Right, Stai for PlanetMosh.com, here with the beautiful Sever from Sumo Psycho. Hello. Uh, welcome to North Wales, welcome to the library. Oh, thank you very much. It's good to be here. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, no it is. No, and this is kicking off our, um, our kind of like UK uh, run. We just did like mainland Europe stuff, so uh, that was a, a bunch of fun. We had such such great times. So yeah, we're we're excited to be back. It's been a while since we've been in Wrexham, almost four years, and I think um, uh, we don't play in Wales as much as we should. So I'm, I like like give the people what they want and come back. You know. I say. I mean, I I've not heard of you. I've, oh, I have heard of you, but not not for for a while. But um, just for the people out there, you. Were, you're from Hamilton, Canada, is it? Yes, so just an hour outside Toronto. Two members are actually from North Toronto, and then uh, me and Matt uh, are from outside Hamilton. So it's about an hour outside. It's kind of a steel city, kind of rough and tumble, and they have a, a big kind of rock music scene. It's actually one of the cooler places in Canada to be for, for this type of music. So cool, I like yeah, there. Yeah. Very artistic place. And uh, you don't know, but we've actually got something in common. What's we that? both support in Life of Agony. Oh, yeah, nice! Yeah, a long, long time ago, about 94. Oh, cool. Yeah, a very long time ago, but uh, there you go, you know, it's uh, one of the things, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, touring, you've just done Germany, Switzerland, mm -hmm. Austria. Um, okay, cool. Really oh, good. amazing. Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah super cool. Um, we were, like, not knowing what to expect. It's been over a year, a year and a half since we were there last, and we toured with... Uh, had PE over there a few dates with uh, Butcher Babies and a few dates with Fozzy about four years ago in Nam Point, which was a fun tour. So it was cool. We actually came to a couple of venues that we'd been to before and saw like our old posters on the wall and definitely some familiar faces, some familiar fans, building new ones. We had people come in from Israel and Slovenia to some of the wow. shows, that which is really rewarding, it was super cool. Um, yeah, so we just had a great time. We fit in a lot of sightseeing as much as we could. And another highlight was uh, we're really close uh, friends with a fan who is originally from Germany. And he uh, flew to Canada during one of our uh, crowdfunding campaigns. We had an option that if you wanted to be in a music video, you could pay a certain amount uh, to help us raise money for the album and you could be featured in our video. And we didn't think anyone would fly in from Germany for this. We thought maybe some local fans would maybe want to be part of it, but this guy flew in and we, since then he's been, he's flown around the world to see us everywhere from Orlando to hometown in Hamilton. He's been to uh, New Orleans and just comes all over the place to see us, which is crazy. He's coming to Liverpool again. But he's a school teacher, an English teacher. So he's like, you have to come to my high school. So last minute, like a week ago, he was at our Halloween show in our hometown of Hamilton. And we planned this kind of like secret high school show to kind of blow out of the water. And I had no idea how well it would go. There's like 700 students just like, crazy rocking out and moshing in a high school. I couldn't believe the headmaster let us get away with this. I was oh. like, this is insane, but it was one of the coolest experiences. Full I've mosh pit. Yeah. That's what he wants, isn't it? Absolutely what he wants. <laughs> like 10 year olds just going at it. I was like, whoa, this Start is young, start young. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I saw some photos of the Viper rooms you played in yes. Austria. That yes. was absolutely tiny. Oh, it was, it's actually pretty big. It's like, um, it's really down low and kind of like a tunnel system, almost like I'm not sure if it was used for some kind of like underground sewer or bunker, I don't know, but it was like really kind of down underground, very punk rock. And uh, we invited all my lady psychos on I stage see. to oh, do yeah, a little yeah. sing-along, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was a lot really? of fun. So you're, you're an independent band, aren't you? We are, you yes. You do all your own merchandise and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, for sure. All our own recording, all our own music videos, um, all our own funding. Um, there's literally four of us on tour. We don't have a tour manager or crew or anything. It's just the four of us. We run a, a tight ship, a small ship, to uh, keep things a, as efficient as possible. And um, we find the best way to make money is to not spend money. So just keep the cost low. <laughs> no, good, yeah. So did it stop you doing things you want to do on tour, having all this extra responsibility? I don't think so. I think it actually, uh, I think some bands dismiss how much better it is to do things yourself. For instance, having uh, me being all, the only person that can sell the merch, it actually helps me sell more merch when I'm doing it versus somebody that they've never met before, you know, yeah. selling it. So it creates, I think, especially shows where uh, we're meeting new fans. 
to stand there behind the merch table and give uh, people not only a chance to to support the band, but they get photos and autographs and all that stuff. I think really actually helps the interaction. Yeah. It helps fans get to know us better as people and and helps enhance the experience for them when they come to a live show. So how do you how do you find these venues to play? Well. Today is a new one for us. A lot of the ones uh, that we've, we've been to in the UK, we've been to before multiple times. So it's always cool when we get to try a new place. Um, a lot of them are really cool. My favorite venue that I ever got to play in was Satan's Hollow in Manchester. Have you ever been there? No, never heard of So it. you play in the round. So there's right. 360 degrees people can, can go around you. And then every single inch of every wall and floor is covered in like horror like memorabilia and like design. So like the walls have like melted faces inside them and there's like a coffin you can see through the wall and a huge devil over the DJ booth. And so uh -huh. it's pretty rad. It's just like you're kind of going into a haunted house when you go there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the tour this time is quite, geographically it's quite okay, isn't it? You're not sort of there, then there, then there, then there. It sort of follows a pattern this time, doesn't it? Well, this the this part I think is the craziest part because we just came from our last show was in Austria, and we came all the way to Wales from Austria, and then we're going to Belfast. Ireland, yeah, yeah. And then we're going um, all the way back to Dublin and then Leeds, and then then the. Tour, I feel will be a little yeah. easier on us just because of all the ferry crossings and like I think we have to drive like after the show tonight to make sure we get the ferry first thing in the morning for right. to go across so there's a few logistical stuff that is uh, sometimes can get a little tiring but mm. when we played the school for instance we had to be at the school for like 8 a.m. and we're like what kind of rock show is this at 8 in the morning kill me now but it was worth it. <laughs> um, tell me about the tour bus. You built, you built your own tour, your design, oh your own tour, yes, so. yes. In uh, in North America, we are able to um, drive in our own bus that we created for our last uh, U.S. tour, um, which is a ten passenger mini shuttle bus, and we found it at an auction for like twenty five hundred dollars Canadian, which is like super cheap. And the reason nobody bought it is because they thought the engine didn't work because it wouldn't turn over. But then we realized that it literally had a latch that just wasn't shut on the back emergency exit door that like fixed the problem. It was like, had to be open for it to start over. So we got this amazing deal. Um, and then our guitarist just went to work. He was amazing at like building bunks out of scrap wood we actually had left over from a music video. So it kept the cost really low and we put a TV in there and a fridge in there and we could sleep uh, like, Five people, six, six people, if we wanted to. <laughs> we want to get nice and really, cozy. <laughs> seven, if we want to get real cozy. Yeah, I came up with a theme that's for Matt. it. Sorry, that's Matt. Yeah. That's yeah. Matt. <laughs> I came up with a theme for it called Jungle Jungle Disco because I could find the, the cheapest seat covers I could find were all uh, like leopard print, zebra print, and then I decided to make it a little more vibey in there. I hung like a disco ball and put like lights on it, so. If anyone came to party on our bus, it's like the jungle to go back. Heidi was all over that from the butcher bit. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, jungle fever. <laughs> You've only got one day off, haven't you? On this whole tour. Yeah. The 5th of December. Yeah. Right, you know, yes. Skin bit of play that way. Just outside Milton Keynes, you know that. Really? But I thought we were pretty far away because I thought no, we were no, up no, in no. Glasgow. I thought you were doing, what are you doing? I thought what? you were doing either Glasgow, but you're doing Birmingham after that, aren't you? Yeah. But yeah, we should go to it then. What he's saying is we can get down from, yeah, if we exactly finish on Glasgow on the 4th and we leave the morning instead of hanging out there and taking our time, if we just fucking go, excuse my language, uh, we, we could technically make the show. And yeah. Benj will put us on the guest list. That's perfect. Yeah. That's you think perfect we could make it? Yeah. 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 Of course we could. Yeah. That's only like four hours, <laughs> five hours of work. It's not, it's not even. There you go. If you all go from Glasgow, you'd probably yeah. get to Milton Keynes. Yeah, about four hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was further than that. For no, some no, reason. no, 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 no. Oh. We're only a small, uh, we're only a small country. Here. <laughs> we can make that work. Good thing. For, thank you for telling me that. No, that might work. I actually, Benji did message me and he sent me the dates and I was like, oh, I don't think anything lines up because I didn't realize that. Yeah. Fifth day off. Yeah. Yeah. Day off. Okay. That well, night we can make it up. day off. Wow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so sick. talking of Skinwood, yeah, you did this collaboration with uh, with, with with Benji. Um, how did that come about? Well, because I absolutely love that band. Mm, um, so I pretty much took it from all angles. I 
uh, contacted their producer that had worked uh, on their last few records, and he produced the song and did uh, help us produce and mix our whole second album. So contacted him about working with us. Um, didn't first off say like, oh hey, by the way, can you get Benji on track? I really do love his work. So that started the process once I got to know him, and then I also work with a. Uh, uh, Noise Cartel PR agency and uh, they've worked with Kindred as well so when I dropped the hint to Adam over there and said oh yeah I love that band he's like oh yeah I know those guys I'm like well tell, tell Benji I want him to be on the track and I knew their manager Seven I just kept putting it out there like into the universe yeah. like Benji on a Zuma Psycho track Benji on a Zuma Psycho track until finally it, it had worked out we planned to be over here we had planned to work with James we um, had a bunch of people contact him sent him the track that we thought would work and he wrote us back like in a week sent us his like vocal ideas I remember being in a cafe in Manchester with my headphones on me and Matt had to fight over who got to listen to it first and I was like super stoked because knowing um, myself and kind of what brought me to doing this genre was a huge Skinder had a huge part in it uh, Matt and I played together for years when I was in my teens but we kind of lost touch and then the first time that we got back to um, together he's like oh here's a record that you have to check out that I've been listening to and handed me Babylon and then I, I went to him and I was like dude what are you doing like do you want to start like a new project together and we just kind of took it from there so that was kind of really the record that got us you know yeah. talking about doing music together and what kind of started to form to form Sumo Psycho so Mark you want to join us Oh, you know, no, you guys talk, man. I'll just keep adding in when I want. You know, I'm one of those guys that doesn't matter. I, just, I come in and out. I think floating is like charm. Oh. I'm a charming guy. <laughs> Look at that. Work on the so, camera. But <laughs> oh, uh, well, you didn't actually meet him, did you? Until the video shoot. Yes, exactly. So how how did he sort of put all the track? How did he put all this? How did the track come about? Without yeah. Him? So he has a home studio where he could track his vocals. So when we sent him the, the, the song, he recorded his rough vocals there. And then I guess James, uh, the producer, and, and Benji went back and forth and kind of figured things out how they would do it after we recorded the track with James. And then, um, so yeah, so I guess with technology these days, it's not too hard. And then, but then we called about the video. Yes, we said, we're coming to your hometown. We're in, you're not taking any excuses. We're going to be there. We want to do Beautiful. a music video with you. And we got to check out... Um, the rehearsal room that he actually rehearses with or his buddies in Dub War and like okay. it was super cool because they had all like the their posters everywhere and it was super kind of like cool punk rock location and it was just I was freaking out inside because I was like meeting one of my favorite vocalists and it was so cool to you know, He's a dude. He's an to, yeah it was it was really cool you know people say don't meet your idols because you're gonna be disappointed whereas like to me it was like it was like the best day Absolutely best day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like this band. Like yeah. Oh, cheers, mate. Oh, man. Did you like one too? Yeah. <laughs> the camera, no matter. I was, I was watching the other night, and a couple of times you almost poked your eye out with them. Oh, it was with them oh, It was so close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ridiculous, like. Yeah. And um, so. She's smiling ear to ear in the video. Yeah, I'm like not she's even. supposed to be a rock and roller, and we got back and looked at all the footage, and we're like, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. She's so stoked that she's kind of like kind of forgot that she's supposed to be filming a video, but it was great. Yeah. It, was awesome. it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> so these chapter videos you've got, I think yes. they're brilliant. Oh, I think thank it's a you. Brilliant idea. Um, I think I got up to eight, but I couldn't find nine. But isn't there a ninth? I think nine it's is the missing where it ends, right now. it ends off. Is it? I thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I was going to ask you what, you get sucked into this sort of psycho city world, don't yes. you know? So what, what is the story about okay. for, for the guys out there? Yeah, so we started, uh, our first album is called Lost in Psycho City. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of relate it to almost like an Alice in Wonderland type introduction to our kind of crazy world that we have different characters and kind of anything goes is like an alternate universe where we just have lots of masked creatures and... Uh, the main character, myself, uh, kind of jumps through warped, different weird illusions to get from different points in the in the in the entire city. Oh, you, you want to close? That's not going to change anything. Okay. Jeez. Um, and so it jumps from different points in the story, and we kind of meet new creatures and develop a little rivalry with a character named the Ugly, who kind of follows me through the whole thing. Um, and then so uh, that 
record, I really wanted to do a video for every single song, but obviously doing it myself and taking so much time to do all of it, I couldn't complete it before we knew we had to kind of come out with new music or we were going to get behind and actually yeah. our, our business kind of thing. We'll have an ending eventually. Yes. So, it's going to be one of these long, drawn out... Well, the thing weeks. is, is if I want to totally geek out here, so our second record <coughs> is uh, called Opus Mar, which yes. is named after a train, and the train is uh, the main uh, transportation that goes through Psycho City. Which is the album cover. Yes. The train, yeah. And then on each car of the train for our... Uh, music videos for that album, we have almost like uh, a time warp where it shows a, a, a different train car in each video. So one is like an office kind of train car, one is uh, like an engine room, one is like a dining, kind of old school dining car, and so it's all these little stories that happen involved in the train. So eventually, I would love to tie everything together from album one, album two, maybe with what we do for album three, and kind of complete the story. Because I know a lot of fans have been asking like where it's going to go, how it's going to end up. But we do have a, I do have like a, a plan in my head. It's just getting the time and and finishing well, it all up. So I was going to say that. I was going to say, does the burden of creating all this stuff? So <laughs> you're right. Ah, well, the thing is, is we always make sure that our priorities are with with making the music. And I think that, uh, especially with our music videos, we want them to be entertaining without people following the story. So if somebody just jumped into a music video without having any prior knowledge of any of our other videos or stories, that they'd still be able to take the song and the video for itself and really enjoy it by as, as a piece on its own. And then it's kind of like a bonus that it kind of ties in with our kind of uh, crazy, uh, you know, world of Psycho City. See, your genre to me can appeal to both rock and pop. Right. So I'm sort of bearing that in mind. Do you think the possibilities for the band would be greater if you were signed to a major label? Huh, well, it depends what you our want out of your life. Our that all the time to us. Um, I have been signed to a major label when yes. I was 16. Yes. I was yes. signed to Capitol yeah. Records. Hey, and we, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you don't make your answers faster, you're not going to get it all. I know, we've got... They're about to start sound checking for real. Okay. We're, we're I'm just there. warning we're you. We're okay. there. Uh, we can drink beers all you want, but I don't yeah. want you yelling yeah. over this okay. music. Well, um, so, yeah, so I've been with the label before, so I understand there's upsides and downsides. There's a reason why I became independent, and there's a reason why I am a bit of a control freak, and I do control, you know, Everything, everything everything from the videos to everything I you know do where decide to you know make a move here make a move there creatively with our music and everything um, so yes there could be bigger opportunities mm -hmm. say but you might lose yourself a little bit and I do feel like there were times when I was with the label where I was the face and the voice but yes. there wasn't it was like a huge yeah. machine of people behind that sure. that didn't um, I wasn't the, always the one in the driver's seat and that's what I really didn't like about it is that I wanted to be able to freely create exactly what I wanted when I wanted release it when I wanted and that's what's so cool about what I've been doing the last few years is like when we first started it was like oh, we didn't even have an album we're like oh here's a song here's a video let's throw it out there we made it yesterday who cares if we have a press lead up whatever and you learn as you go but um, but I've really enjoyed doing it independently and I've really gotten so much satisfaction about knowing that everything I, that we've accomplished, we've accomplished because of our hard work. So I'm never against working with other people. You know what we can do guys, if you want to pause it for a second. You All right. Ready? right, we're back again, this time <laughs> in the camper van, pan it round Steve-o. <laughs> our home. Yes. It's a bit louder now. I saw the world burner start to rock out their sound check, so uh, we thought I'd come in for a bit, more, a bit more privacy, so to speak. Yes. So, have you been approached by a major label? Uh, we've been approached by a few labels, yes, for sure. Um, but it's always, to me, about more than just a lot of uh, bands think, oh, I just want to be signed, I don't care, you know what the conditions are, I want as much money as, as I can, and that's the definition of like making it, right? And to us, I've been through that, and I realized that we don't even care how much we make. We look at things like what their track record are, what bands they have on their label that we could potentially be touring with, um, what kind of marketing budget they have for us, because that, that's the type of thing that we realize that we need. We've been able to survive ourselves by doing 
like I do this full time. I'm a songwriter and I do other things on the side, but I've been able to hustle enough to make a living doing this full time. So, um, so you want to be able to keep that going instead of uh, feeling like you're giving su such a huge percentage to the label that you're not being able to maintain your lifestyle and have control over things. So, um, so yeah, so it's, a, it's an interesting debate. I'm always open to having conversations and we have been growing our team slowly but surely. We're working with uh, Oracle Management, um, which um, some of you out there may know is uh, Des Fafara and his wife Anastasia. Uh, Des is the lead singer of Devil Driver and Cold oh, yeah. Chamber. So we've been working with them for the last few months and they're super talented, wow. got a great roster of, of bands there. So yeah, so we do have a, a great agency, great team that we work with. Um, but yeah, it's making sure people are passionate because passion to me is the number one thing on the resume. If you are the biggest level in the world, but you're like the ten, you know 20th priority and they're not really gonna spend the time and effort like really nurturing your band or giving the opportunities to you know five other bands before they think of you maybe it's not really worth it so you always got to balance everything out but yeah but if you use the internet to get all your videos and all sort of stuff out there yes how do you think you could have promoted the band to what you've achieved today 30 years ago Ooh, yeah it'd be a lot different mm. um I know I may be a, a product of the internet age, but I know <laughs> my guitarist, who's a bit older than me, talks about the days of his punk bands going around and flyering all over the city, you know, and doing it the old school way. Oh, he would, yeah. uh, when you first started out, he would even promote his own, own shows and he would do his own. Uh, <laughs> do you just talking about it's days. you, actually. Come in, days. Come in, oh, days. Oh, me, Come on, All right. Yeah. I'm trying to find more beers. It's so loud in there. I know. I can't even um, sit in there. Yeah, so he would, uh, you took over like media centers and churches and got all your buddies' bands together and created shows so he would have opportunities to play. So yeah. it was a different world back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, different strategies and uh, obviously so it's. Uh, the internet age has its pros and cons. I feel because I love the idea of multimedia, not just music. I like being in front of the camera, where some bands are like, I just want to play my instrument. I don't care about music videos and photo shoots and all this stuff. I love all that stuff. I'm totally there. So I think having that multimedia side of me is an asset in this day and age. And having the uh, the creative side of me that likes creating that thing. I mean, we've you know film everything we do, put up vlogs, yeah. Luck, the imagery, the videos, all that stuff. So that works for us for this day and age. So, um, yeah, there's good things and bad things about it. And I know a lot of people have, you know, I do reminisce about the days where you would like listen to the whole album and go to the store and get excited to buy it. Now, magazine. I used to get excited about going to a magazine rack because <laughs> the only way I could find out about a band's actual story or who they were was from an interview in a magazine, which meant I had to yeah. pay for that magazine and support that magazine yeah. in the first place for doing their work. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. That's one thing that I miss big time. That yeah. I'm like, it kind of keeps. I mean, I love the fact that we can all be close on the internet. On the other hand, there was a mystery sometimes about learning about somebody. It took a lot more to get into that I kind of thought was intriguing back then that I loved. Yeah, everything's yeah. a lot. The walls are much more broken down. I mean, but that's it, okay. Like we yeah. love to talk to people, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know what? I'm sure you know what I mean. There's just this I, missing yeah, I, that I, little I bit of a that whole celebrity of a rock star to an extent. That half the reason we look up to them is that we don't know everything about them half the time. Yeah, yeah. Now they know everything. They know what color underwear I'm wearing. Yeah. I'm not wearing any right yeah. now, but just so you know. <laughs> I've still got reels, <laughs> tape reels from my band being in the studio with the actual reels. Wow. Yeah, of course. Yeah, That's yeah, exactly yeah. the same kind of vibe, right? And That's probably, the way it yeah. goes. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I do feel yeah. sorry that I put you guys out here because it's a little colder, eh? No, it's okay, it's fine. <laughs> but it, come on, it's so loud in there. Once they started, I was like, man, that is definitely. Uh, uh, do you know these guys? I saw the world. Nice people. We yeah. played with them like they opened for us. Uh, they supported us when we played with the Butcher Babies in Chester uh, two years oh, right, ago. Yeah. yeah, they were the first one on. Yeah. So I, as soon as they walked in, I was like, I recognize these guys. Yeah, like yeah. I know them, and they're totally cool. The girl's an awesome singer. Oh. She's totally cool. Uh, yeah, they're good people. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I have a couple more. That's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. New album, anything? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's ready to go. This goes back to your almost. question with the label stuff. <laughs> yeah. We have, we do have tons of new material. Yes. Tons of it right yes. now. Yes. So We're, we've we been we've so been writing much. over the last year. Um, we have some great songs. Um, we are hoping it is going to be out uh, kind of a summerish. It just time will. We're gonna make of 2019. Um, 
Yeah, we're just kind of right now because it's kind of getting to that quiet spot in the year with the end of the year and Christmas and stuff. We're kind of going to start gearing things up in the new year. We have an acoustic, our second acoustic EP that will be dropping in uh, like a week or so. Um, we're also going to record our cover. Songs. We're doing a cover uh, this tour right now, which I'm not going to say what it is, but we're going we're gonna to rec record that to just release it too because as we've been playing it live right now, all the kids seem to like it. So. Mm. You've done quite a few covers, haven't you? We only, I yeah. like to do one every tour. And uh, although for the past two years we've been doing the chili pepper one because it went over mm. so well that it just keeps we keep going back to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do, we're doing give it away forever. But uh, I don't know. Was it you? I think it was Sky that uh, she said, "Let's do this." And I don't want to say. It. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, but yeah, she was like, "Let's try this." So we started trying this song. Are you guys gonna be around for tonight at all? Yeah, you of course. Yeah, 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 well, well, you'll see it tonight, and then yeah. you'll be like, "Oh, that's what they're talking about." And I think that she does a great job of it. But I don't think I see too many girls attack a band like this. So I was really cool that we're doing it. And uh, so at first we were like, "Oh, it's just a cover for us going into the UK to do live." But now I feel like I told the band, I was like, uh, "We have." mega jet lag when we come home for a week nobody talks we just go to sleep and watch tv for hibernate yeah hibernate for a week um but i said everybody before we get into that hibernation mode as soon as we get off the plane everybody come back to the studio and we're gonna like rip this off in a day to make sure i have it so that when we go into hibernation mode we're not uh, sloppy and come back so we'll do it before we go into hibernation mode and hopefully we'll have that recover out before christmas even finishes i want to do that i just want to give out christmas present that's my yeah. actual thing i love giving back to people that are giving to us so yeah to me, that's a big thing. I can, if we can give a really cool cover and not have to make it about us so much, it's just a cool cover and let people have it. I think that's kind of a good thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So lots on the well, horizon. Sorry, I'm talking away. I no, walk no, in no, here, right? Sorry. I walk yeah. in, I'm all of a sudden, blah, blah, blah. No, but I'll tell you, look, we have so much material right now. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. It's all over the place. Because we work with Des Ferrara now, the yeah, singer sorry. from... Yeah, exactly. So he's been pushing us to write and write and write. And I love the fact that he did because all the material that he pushed us forward, I don't even know... If, if it would have come out the same way without him, but he just from his opinions and his ideas, and uh, it goes all—it's like a roller coaster ride. I feel like the last two records was like this is what we do, and this third one is like this is what we're going to end up doing. It's starting to grow into a whole new world. Some of this is what you're talking about is ending into a bigger world where we could end up going a little more commercial and with a bigger label if we wanted. Not that I want to necessarily, yeah. but we're definitely trying a couple different things that I think are really cool. You should do what you do what's right for the band. Well, that's what I think is, and, and, and the fans that's what as well. he said. Yeah, and you know. we don't want to forget that. But, no, uh, no. but on the other hand, I like to I like experimenting and coming yeah. up with new stuff. I mean, Sky's so diverse. Her voice is, goes all over the place. So, uh, and I I feel like when we're producing songs with her, because uh, we did the last records pretty much ourselves with James helping us, uh, James LaRock from Skin Dread Guys. Uh, I felt like it was still, this is what we were, you know, but I feel like the new one, and we have all this new stuff that is experimenting more. I've never heard Sky sound as good as she does on the new stuff that we're working on. Right so I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, all I can say is, I can't wait for tonight. Thank I'm really looking forward thank to you, it, you. you know, from everything I've heard so far. And thank you very much. I think it's been an absolutely brilliant interview. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Sorry thanks for guys much in moving it into this area. No, not at all. It's all it all adds to it, don't it? So mm -hmm. yeah. So thanks very much. No problem. Thank you, my cheers. man. Here. Cheers. Oh, cheers. I went to head. Look, I went to like an adult. <laughs> I, I was know. like, ah, cheers. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Guys. Thanks so thank much. You. Cheers. <laughs>